Whether new shooter, longtime gun owner, or even police officer or soldier, your handgun needs a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Crimson Trace. This is Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, broadcasting nationwide. Have a question? Want to make a comment? Call Tom now at one Tom Talk Gun. That's 866-825-5486. Or you can send us an email, tom at guntalk.com. Now, here's Tom Gresham. Uh, welcome again to Gun Talk. Glad that you are with us for this hour. We're going to be talking about, well, your guns, my guns, everybody's guns, ammo, scopes, optics, and gun rights, of course. We're talking about gun rights. We're... Uh, we had lined up Larry Pratt from the Gun Owners of America to join us. We're uh, trying to line him up, get him on board right now. But in the meantime, let me throw this out. Some of the things we talk about on Gun Talk are easy. Nine versus 45, which would you rather buy? Do you like Magnum rifle calibers or should you use a two seventy? Uh, do you like small guns or big guns? And then some things are more difficult, a little bit thornier, if you will. I was reading an article by David Kodria uh, in Daily Caller. There, there's a movement you may be aware of throughout the country among gun owners that has taken on the, the line, I will not comply. That says a lot. It's a lot wrapped up in that one line. I will not comply. We just saw that happen in New York State. We had to sue New York State to make them finally release the numbers because they passed this, they call it the SAFE Act. It's a gun registration scheme for modern sporting rifles. If you own a modern sporting rifle in New York State, you're required to register it. These are the guns, the sporting rifles that the gun banners like to call assault weapons. They're modern sporting rifles. They're used for hunting. They're used for competition. They're used for recreational shooting. They're used for personal defense. And they're owned just because people like them. And that's reason enough. But if you are of the mindset that they are assault weapons, then you want to get rid of them. There are a lot of people, Hillary Clinton at the front of the line, who want to ban these guns. Millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of guns owned by Americans. They want to ban these guns. Ask her today, she'll tell you, yes, I want to ban those guns. She's a gun banner. So New York State passes a law that says you must register your guns. Now, depending on who you talk to, the estimates are that in New York State there are a half million, maybe a million, maybe more than a million of these guns owned by New Yorkers. We kept asking them and said, well, how many of these modern sporting rifles have been registered? Oh, we can't tell you. We won't tell you. We refuse to tell you. So finally, you had to do a Freedom of Information Act request, which they refused, and finally had to sue them, get the court to order them to release the numbers. The numbers are right at about 45,000. So 45,000 out of roughly a million guns have been registered, which may be the single largest act of civil disobedience in the history of this country. It is at the point, the tip of the spear of the I will not comply movement. So here is my question to you. And we don't tell people who you are. I'm not going to tell them where you live. You just call us and let us know. The question is, if they passed a law where you live that said you are required to register your guns, you have to come down here. You have to give us the serial numbers of all your guns, the models of all your guns, 
You have to have them photographed. You have to certify that you own these guns. Will you comply? What will you do if and when it gets to that point? It's a real simple question, and I'm, I'm not, I'm really not doing this to stir the pot. I'm curious. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, people will say they won't, but then they will. Well, evidently, in New York, they, a lot of people said they won't, and they didn't. And that's New York. I don't know about Texas and Oklahoma and Georgia and Kansas and Iowa and Maine and Minnesota and Dakotas, Colorado. So the question is, what will you do? Will you, will you comply? 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. 866-825-5486. Or actually, it's just easier. If you can't remember all that, here's make it easy. Just dial one and then Tom... Talk Gun. Be right back. The Black Hills. There's nothing like it on Earth. The kind of place where characters become legends. Wild Bill Hickok. Crazy Horse. Calamity Jane. Pick any part of the world and you'll find people go there to make it their own. But this is where people come to get made. This is the place that made the people who make the best ammo on earth. Black Hills Ammunition. The 45 Auto, also known as the 1911, is the standard other defensive pistols are measured against. No matter what pistol you carry, techniques developed around the 1911 are vital. You know you need training. And you know your concealed carry class definitely was not training. Now Gun Talk presents an exciting DVD, Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. Tiger's unique training style will have you drawing, moving, shooting, and running your gun better, no matter what style pistol you prefer. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can order our DVDs of Tiger's instruction. ShopGunTalk.com also has a two-DVD set, including Concealed Carry 1. Get both for the information you know you need. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com has DVDs, books, and other essential gear. ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Attacks happen every day. How will you react? See real people put into real-life criminal attack situations on First Person Defender. Discover what works and what doesn't. Kidnapping, ATM robbery, home invasion, and other attacks. Learn how to save your life and the lives of your family. Get the entire first season on DVD at ShopGunTalk.com. Get prepared. ShopGunTalk.com. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called WhereToShoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. All right, back with you. The question on the floor is this. If the government says you must register your guns, will you comply? In New York State, we know that somewhere between a half million and a million people said, nope, not going to do it. Wouldn't be prudent. (laughs) And they didn't. Kendall's online, too, out of South Dakota. Hey, Kendall. What say you, man? They tell you you got to register those guns. What you going to do? Hell no. What guns? And even if they did get lucky and they went around and they come, went door to door and confiscated every gun in the country, the first thing people would do is start making them all over again. Guns are just a simple mechanical device. What are they going to do? Confiscate steel, turning lathes, and milling machines? 
a good point. And people even own CNC machines, you know, in their basements these days. But yeah, firearms are fairly simple. The other thing is, of course, and and at its core, and Kendall, thanks for your call. At its core, the basic question is, why? Why do you want to register guns if, as you say, and give us all these assurances, oh, no, 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 we would never, we would never want to take away your guns. We just want to know who has them. Really? And why, might we ask, do you want to know who has them? What purpose will you, do you have for that? What will you do with that information? I can think of only one thing. If you want to know who has guns, give me a reason, a purpose, a goal, a course of action that a government's going to take with that information that does not include confiscating them. I don't know. It's possible it's happened, but I don't know of any place where guns have been confiscated where they were not first registered. That includes California, by the way, in case you are not aware. Confiscation has been done in California. They said, yes, you can own those SKSs, but you must register them. And lots of people did. And then they went, oh, sorry, guys. Oh, man, I'm so sorry, but you got to turn them in. Huh. By the way, you know that Canada registered guns for years, spent billions and billions of dollars on their long gun registration scheme. And now they're dropping it. Because they found out it did no good. Also, they had <laughs> a very high level of non-compliance would be a kind way to put it. Of course, the question then becomes, if you're the government and you think that there's non-compliance, What's your next step? How do you ratchet this up? Oh, well, we'll keep records on people who buy 223 ammo because we're going to figure that most of that's going for modern sporting rifles, a.k.a. assault weapons. And then they come and knock on your door. Oh, we've just moved to another level, haven't we? Hmm. Line four, Brian is in Texas. Hey, Brian, what say you on this? Hey, Tom, how you doing? It's good to talk with you. First time I've actually tried calling in and got through. But anyways, um, I uh, basically am not going to comply with whatever they say because we have the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment guarantees our gun rights, and there's no reason to apply, uh, comply. If they come knocking on my door, uh, they they won't get everything that I have anyway, so... Um, as far as 223 ammo, there's a lot of it out there, and, and uh, we can hand load as much as we want. And uh, there's ways around all that stuff, but um, uh, my point is that I will not comply. Well, evidently, a lot of people would. I, I kind of expect that of folks in Texas. Uh, I was, I got to tell you, and appreciate the call, Brian. I was impressed when I heard the numbers out of New York. Wow. A, I don't know, what is, you had to run the numbers on 80%, 90% noncompliance. Way to go, New Yorkers. Tell them to stick it where the sun doesn't shine. Uh, do they, would they also like for us to sit in the back of the bus? Thank you very much. No, I don't think so. Goodness gracious. Let's see. Did we already take our break, Jim? We need another one here. We're good? All right, we're good. All right, I'm just trying to to keep track here. Charles is in Casper, Wyoming, one of my favorite places. Line three. Hey, Charles, how are you? Hello, Tom. How are you today, sir? I am good. What you, what you think? They they call and they they say, okay, we just passed the law. It's now the law. We just all and and all they want, all they want is just a record. Who owns them? What do you have? What's the serial number? We don't want to take away your guns. Oh, no problem. Absolutely not. Uh, I will not comply. It don't fly. It's, okay, and you know what's going to happen. Your your friends who don't agree with you are going to say, yeah, that's easy for you to say now. 
But when they say, you know, that's going to make you a criminal if you don't comply. And you don't want to be a criminal, Charles, because you're one of the good guys. No, I don't, Tom. You're right. So I guess what I'd have to say is that I sold all my guns at a garage sale. Yeah. You know, I mean, of course, you could do the whole escalation. But let me just tell you, people say, well, what happens if they do door-to-door searches? If they do door-to-door searches, they might as well be wearing red coats. And I think the rules of engagement are roughly the same. Ooh, did Tom just say what I thought he said? Ooh. You heard about the 72 people who were killed for noncompliance, didn't you? The government killed 72 people for noncompliance, not turning in their guns. Yeah, it was a couple, 300 years ago. Lexington Concord is what you know it by. When the government, in this case the British government, came to confiscate the firearms and the powder. And the people said, nope, I will not comply. It's how we got this country. Hmm. Interesting, eh? Scott is uh, on line one out of Philadelphia, Ohio. Hey, Scott. Hey, Tom. How are you today? I am well. Talk to me. I was just listening to your comment. I'm in my office today working a little bit, and I like the previous gentleman who just called. Uh, There is no way I will ever let them confiscate, photograph, take the serial numbers, register, or whatever with the weapons that I have. Uh, I'm 68 years old. I'm a benefactor life member of the NRA. I'm a Vietnam veteran, and I would never let that happen. And uh, I know people have said the same thing to me. What happens if they come in and threaten you with death? Well, I've thought about it, and at 68 years old, Hey, I've lived a good part of my life. I think they would have to take me out. Well, you've already fought to defend the rights and the liberties that we have in this country. What you're telling me is that once you're in, you're in. Absolutely. All right. I appreciate it, Scott. Um, Fascinating. Very interesting. All right, here's the question. Let's take this and spin it up a little bit. In some states, you are required to register your guns. And if you're in one of those states, you may be sitting there thinking, yeah, I hear you saying that, but. And those of us who are in states who, where we don't have to register guns are going, why? Tell me again why you live there. Now, I understand staying and fighting the good fight and getting it changed. I get all that. And it's very worthwhile. And I'm glad you're doing it. Is it North Carolina where you have to actually get the permission of the sheriff before you can buy a handgun? Why in the name of God would you live there? Why would you put up with such a thing? I, I'm flabbergasted, just blown away that people will live under that and just say, well, no, it just is. I don't like it, but I just do it. Yeah, I know they've got a record of every one of my guns. Why do you think they want the record of all of your guns? Hmm. Line two, Gary is out of Hot Springs, Arkansas. Hey, Gary, welcome to Gun Talk. Hey, Gary, you there? Gary put his phone down. He's walking around. He's got a sandwich. He's trying to get the beer out of the fridge. No, nope, yeah, nope, hear him. Don't drink. There he is. <laughs> I'm still here. No, sir. I was, okay, I was, hey, Gary. I was, I was trying to figure out the delay. Uh, okay, well, you got you got to turn the radio off. I'm in a different room. You, yep, you got to just have your phone on. Okay, talk to me. What do you think? Well, you asked about complying, correct? Mm-hmm. Well, well, I will not, and and and, and they're going to anyhow. That's what that's their intent is to take our guns. You know, it's been in the books since '61. All their trainings to take our guns. And so All whose training? The government's training. The the. What government? Well, the the federal government. Uh, the everybody being armed. That uh, all the different federal agencies are armed. All the. Uh, 
all the uh, training is for, uh, as you read, is for patriots or uh, constitutionalists. Yeah, there, there is, you know, and to, I don't want to get too far out on the uh, conspiracy idea, but to your point, there is a lot of information being given to law enforcement officers and agencies about be on the lookout for don't tread on me uh, flags and bumper stickers, people who claim to be sovereign citizens, people who claim to be patriots, people who are in the Tea Party. These are the dangerous people. Yeah, it's a little disturbing when your government says, if you believe in the Constitution, then you should be considered dangerous. Kind of makes you wonder, if that's their position, then what do they believe in? They don't believe in upholding the Constitution, and they think that people who do are dangerous. Doesn't that make you just scratch your head a little bit and go, Kind of an Alice in Wonderland, upside down, inside out, topsy turvy world. That's just odd. So, where we are is that we've got people saying, no, I'm not going to comply with such a requirement. I just wouldn't do that. Toward that end, had a thought, kind of branching off. Okay, break. I'm going to a different place here, but just a thought. Ammo prices are low right now. Pretty much across the board. Good prices. <laughs> Are you buying ammo now like you did when it was high? Did you buy when prices were high and you stopped when prices are low? Not really a good strategy for the stock market or for buying ammo. I guess what I'm saying is keep up that buying. Putting it in. I don't care if it's 100 boxes at a time, 100 rounds at a time, or 1,000 rounds at a time, or whatever. If three or four years ago you thought, gee, I'd like to have 1,000 rounds or I'd like to have 10,000 rounds, the number's still good. But now you can buy it for a third of what you were paying then, and you can find it. It's actually available. Your local store has it at good prices. So the question for you is, let me ask you this. Are you still buying ammo? Are you putting away ammo at these good prices? 866-TALK-GUN gets you in. Or shoot me an email, tom at guntalk.com. Covering all aspects of gun ownership every week on this fine radio station. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. All right, comments on Twitter to the question of will you comply in order to register your guns? We were talking about the people in New York State who refused to register their modern sporting rifles as required by law. We don't know how many are actually in the state Guesses are anywhere between a half million and a million. Roughly 45,000 people actually registered their modern sporting rifles, semi-automatic firearms. Uh, Let's see, John on Twitter says, I have no plan to comply. Brent says, real simply, no way, Jose. (laughs) Okay, that'll work. And in the category of politics being very interesting, which candidate for president said this? Said, let me get this right here. It says 99.9% of gun owners are law abiding. And about the, uh, the law that was passed, Lawful Commerce and Firearms Act, which says you can't sue a gun maker for the misdeeds of somebody who uses the product or misuses the product. And he said, well, what would you do? Would you sue? So if somebody gets hit with a baseball bat, are you going to sue the bat company? It makes no sense to be able to do that. So very much defending gun ownership and gun owners. So which candidate said that? Hmm. Bernie Sanders, who has run as a socialist. Before He is challenging Hillary Clinton from the left. (laughs) Oh, politics is so weird. 
Now, I mean, he's don't get me wrong. He's still a gun batter. He loves the idea of banning guns and registering guns and having more controls on guns. And he's the one that said, we need to meet in the middle. I said, yeah, we'll meet in the middle. If this is the starting point, we're going to work our way backwards. What I want to get to is zero gun control laws, none, absolutely zero. But the middle position is we'll get rid of half of them now. That's the middle. Of course, he's thinking that somewhere between this and total gun confiscation is where he would like to be. So it all depends on which direction that you want to move. Holy cow. Let's see. uh, Line four, Kurt's with us out of West Virginia. Hey, Kurt, you're on Gun Talk. Hey, how you doing? Great show. Love it when I can catch it. First, to answer your question, no, I wouldn't. I would not register my guns. And my main reason is because I like history a little bit, and a certain word means a lot to me, tyranny, and the definition of it. And I think that is something that is lost in a lot of education for our young folk coming up and everything, understanding what our forefathers went through and understanding why we are and who we are today plays an important part. No, it's it's right. And uh, you know what? It's up to each of us to make sure that our kids and grandkids are getting that message. And if they may or may not be getting it in school, but we have to make sure that they're being told how did the country form? Why? What were they looking for? What were the the rights that they demanded? You know, to be able to get into, you know, to start this country. What were the Bill of Rights really all about? Uh, understanding how tyranny takes place, and then if you're if you're any kind of student at, at all of history, and let I me mean, forget everything else. Just take the last hundred years and look at where genocide has taken place. Germany, Cambodia, Canada, Russia, some places in Africa, it all, all, all of it was preceded by registration and confiscation of guns. In some form or fashion, they had to take the guns away from the people. You can't willy-nilly go through and round up people and put them on trains or you know, kill them with machetes or put them in gulags if the people have guns and they simply shoot the people who come to get them. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Tom's one of those crazy people. Well, well, also kind of, I'm not saying that's not true. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm also a student of history. So just, you have to put the two together there. Steve's in Pensacola on line three. Hey, Steve, you went up to the NRA museum? Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I traveled up to the D.C. area to visit our daughter, son-in-law, and the grandkids. And uh, while we were there, mm-hmm. I took my son-in-law over to uh, to Fairfax to the NRA National Firearms Museum uh, to tour it because I'd never been there and I'd heard a lot of good things about it. And I'll tell you what a right. what a really well laid out museum and and uh, what a professional staff they've got. Um, I, I was just overwhelmed. We spent a couple hours touring the museum, and then afterwards, I knew that they had a range in the in the headquarters. So I thought, okay, let's check out the range and see how that looks. And, and so uh, we were directed to to where the range was, but we were cautioned that well, the range is closed. But they still said that you can go in there and look at it. And I t- I felt like I was walking into a lawyer's office. This place was like pristine. I mean, it's like a corporate headquarters down there in the range area, and it I just. I just wanted to encourage any listener that happens to be in the D.C. area, you don't have to be an NRA member. They never ask for whether you're a member or what level or anything. You know, everybody is welcome to go in and uh, and just tour around. I was really impressed with the uh, with the movie guns that were in the Ruger room. That was really kind of cool. Oh, and, yes. and the hunting hunting guns that were in the Peterson room. It was just a, a really positive experience. And the only downer about it was having to deal with the traffic to get there and go and get back to Alexandria. But other than that, it was it was well worth it. So you would recommend it as a place to go to visit then? Oh yeah, if some, I tell you, we went through some of the some of the Smithsonian's uh, while we were there too, and this to me was done much better than the Smithsonian's that we went to because they actually had explanations of what you know the individual what was you know why this individual firearm was being displayed and some history and that kind of thing and. And I got to be honest with you, I think the Smithsonian is kind of, you know, it, it needs to be, you know, reinvigorated because you walk in there and, and you see an exhibit, but there's no background to it to understand, okay, what's the, how did right. this come to be here? What's, you know, why is it important kind of thing? But uh, 
Well, like I say, the fact that the, the staff at the, at the NRA headquarters was so professional and courteous, and I tell you, if, if I hadn't been an NRA member, I, my, my paradigm would have been, you know, thrown into chaos, but I haven't met those people there. It's really great people. Well, that is great. I appreciate that range report. It, literally a range report, in this case, on a range, the, the National Firearms Museum uh, at the NRA headquarters in Virginia. If you get a chance, if you're over there, if you're in D.C., make the drive out. It is very worthwhile. All right, 866-TALK-GUN. Be right back. The Smith & Wesson Bodyguards. Carry more comfortably, walk more confidently. When it comes to personal protection, nothing beats a bodyguard. Choose the lightweight, compact, and concealable Bodyguard 380 pistol or the Bodyguard 38 revolver, both with a built in laser sight. The Smith & Wesson Bodyguards. Carry more comfortably, walk more confidently. For 36 years, the U.S. Sportsmen's Alliance has been fighting to protect hunting, fishing, and trapping for sportsmen from coast to coast. Today, we are under constant attack from extremist animal rights groups who want to end your ability to hunt in the U.S. Join us to protect our sporting heritage and our way of life outdoors. To join or for more information on how you can help, go to ussportsmen.org. That's ussportsmen.org. No matter what gun you have, you want it to hit harder, shoot faster and flatter, and be more accurate. You get all that with the ammunition from Double Tap. Double Tap's experts select the best bullets, then load them to higher velocities while keeping safe pressures. Shoot small groups, shoot farther. Use custom hunting loads in your handgun or rifle. Even fire two projectiles with one shot. DoubleTapAmmo.com. That's DoubleTapAmmo.com. There's a rise in home invasions in America, and you need to be ready. Ready to protect yourself and your family. The Bedside Backup from Crossbreed Holsters keeps your gun at your bedside ready to go. It also folds flat for easy storage and travel. Take it with you and use with any hotel bed. To see more, go to CrossbreedHolsters.com. That's CrossbreedHolsters.com. The Bedside Backup is not a child safety device. Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, in support of Homeland Security's new definition of a terrorist, presents this Trap a Terrorist tip. Tip number seven. Homeland Security has determined that people who own guns are afraid the government wants to disarm them. They quote an old, irrelevant, and subversive document they call the Constitution. This document was just some notes made by a few of the more radical and irrational founding fathers. They were never meant to become public or to be taken seriously. If you know of anyone who owns that document, or who makes reference to it, or who uses words such as freedom or liberty, notify Homeland Security immediately. Do not attempt to apprehend them. Do not go near them. Do not listen to them. If they talk to you, cover your ears and sing nursery rhymes as loud as you can. We do not want you to become infected with their dangerous ideas. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Yes, indeed. I don't know what you're going to add to that one. Line one, Mike's with us out of Dodge City, Kansas. Hello, Mike. You're on Gun Talk. Hello, Tom. I appreciate you taking the call. You bet. Uh, I was remembering that in the late 60s, early 70s, that uh, New York uh, City had a registration of semi-automatic weapons, and that was 22 shotguns, whatever. Then in the late uh, 70s, mid to late 70s, they came in and confiscated them. Uh, so, yeah, D.C. I don't did the same the, thing. The, I don't see why the New Yorkers would trust the city or the state. I think they don't. I think you're right. Yeah. I remember City Councilman, uh, D.C. City Councilman John Wilson, when they passed the law to confiscate the guns where before they had registered them, and the w- warm, comforting thing they kept saying is, we don't want to take your guns. We just want to know where they are. We just want to know who they are. That's just a safety measure. We're not going to take your guns away. Don't be silly. Don't be, you're just, you guys are overstating the thing. And then 
when he called for the confiscation of these guns and got it, City Councilman John Wilson said, quote, unquote, I never promised anybody anything. There it is. I didn't promise you. I know somebody back then may have promised you that we weren't going to take it away, but I never did that. One of the basic principles you need to always hold on to is that no action by any state legislature or any Congress is binding upon a future legislature or Congress. Promises made by the Congress or the state do not have to be honored or kept by those who follow behind. So if they tell you, we're only going to do this, we'll never do that other, they can come along later on and do that other because they can. And if you comply and make no mistake, compliance is what they're after. How many times have you heard police officers say, oh, he didn't comply? It's not that you didn't do the thing. It's that you didn't comply and show them that, yes, I will bow down. Yes, I will take a knee. Yes, I will honor your authority. The compliance is what they're actually after. Line three, Andy's in Reno, Nevada. Hello, Andy. Hey, how are you? I'm well. Good. I want to share my story real quick. I just attended the NRA benefits event here in Reno, Nevada at the GSR or at the Atlantis and last night and it was a great event and I'll tell you we shared some stories about running in with law enforcement and our rights to keep our weapons in our possession when we were pulled over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so basically 30 second story. I was moving back from Phoenix, Arizona, back up to Reno, Nevada. I was pulled over in Hawthorne, Nevada. And the officer pulled me over, said I didn't stop at the stop sign, the only stop sign between Las Vegas and Fallon. So it ended up, he said, I didn't stop long enough. But the moral of the story was, it says, do you have any weapons in your car? And I said, yes. And I had a Glock 23 on my seat to this right of me. And he Mm -hmm. says, I need to take that away from you. And I said, no. He goes, why? I go, because the only fingerprints on that weapon are mine. And he said, I need to take that from you. And I said, my lawyer might have a problem with that. And the rest of the story is they held me for 45 minutes, brought, brought in two other police vehicles, darked out, scared the hell out of me for 45 minutes, and that mm-hmm. let me go on my way after they realized that I was actually right. But the moral of the story you is say you don't were, ever wait, wait, let wait, wait, the back police. up, back up, back up, back up. When you say you were right, did they end up taking the gun? Nope. Hell no. They cannot take my gun from me. That was not the purpose yeah. of the pullover. It depends, it depends on the state. And you need to be aware of this. You really? need to be aware of this because, yes. In some states, absolutely, positively legal for an officer to remove that firearm during the stop itself uh, and then give it back to you at the end of the stop. So don't be getting on your high horse, especially with an officer there, because here's the deal. As many of my friends who are cops says, it's real simple. It says, I will not lose. That's police mantra. I'm not going to lose. I've got a vest. I've got a gun. I've got a radio. I've got buddies. Not going to lose. That is the wrong time, in my view, to get into a urination Olympics on the side of the road about this. So understand, and once again, you got to know the laws where you are, but I just think you might want to brief up on that real nice to thump your chest and say, look what I did. Sometimes it's not the better way to go. But make sure that you know the laws in your state. 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. This is Gun Talk.
Even though today's radio show is winding down, if you're on hold, stay there. Tom will pick your call up during the Gun Talk After Show. It's an on-topic, off-topic, free-for-all, coming up right after today's broadcast. And this one from Cecilia in Elko, Nevada. I'm a 68-year-old grandma, and I've worked hard to raise my kids. I had a decent job, but you know, not a lot of money for extra anything. My guns are nothing fancy or expensive, but by God, I worked overtime and saved pennies to pay for them. And then all uppercase. By God, no one is taking them from me. 68-year-old grandma, Cecilia. Thank you, Cecilia. Just in line two, what in the world have you done now? <laughs> well, this uh, guy on the, that's got this talk show is telling me that there's a new XPS that Davidson's exclusively has. <laughs> <laughs> you did, didn't you? I have my fourth. This is my number four XPS. I mean, how nice is the XDS? I mean, there's a single stack, uh, thin little gun. Did you get a forty-five nine? What'd you I get? Got, I got the forty-five. Yeah. Okay. Four yeah. inch barrel. Uh, no, I got the three three, three point three inch. Okay. I I have a four inch. I've got a nine in the four inch barrel, and a nine in the three point three. And now I've got two forty five. <laughs> You're my kind of guy. <laughs> Davidson's must love you. <laughs> yeah. By the way, for those folks that don't know, Davidson's, if you go to galleryofguns.com, uh, you can order your gun there. They'll deliver it to your local dealer. You go through the background check there, but they got uh, good deals and exclusive guns. You got one of the exclusive ones, right? Because it's not available anywhere else. Yep. Yep. Very sweet. Well, all righty. You are a believer. You are an XDS fan for sure. Now, which one do you carry most of the time? Well, I this it's so pretty with that two tone. I, I've been carrying this new one uh, with the flat darker. Well, all righty then. It sounds like yeah. a winner. I was uh, I had on my XDS yesterday. As a matter of fact, I uh, it's one of the I have several that I rotate, but that's one of my go to guns. I wear it often. So very, and they just shoot. We actually backed off. We were shooting some XDSs. This is a short little gun with four three point three inch and four inch barrels carry guns, and we're shooting them and hitting steel at 100 yards, one zero zero football field length yards. So they are shooters by golly. Justin, thank you for the call. I appreciate that. Now, that's a range report. Holy cow. Uh, so many, so many good guns. And people say, well, which gun should I get? That's the, one, the question I get all the time. I don't know. It's gotten a lot harder. Uh, 20 years ago, it was easier because there weren't nearly as many good guns. I mean, just take a look at that basic, that form factor. Single stack, not tiny, but smallish uh, carry gun. XDS, shield, Ruger, uh, Smith & Wesson shield, the Ruger LC9S, uh, on and on, the SIGs. You just go on and on. Obviously, there's even Glocks uh, like that. It's crazy. Uh, And you can even get into the smaller gun companies that just... It's amazing. So you basically you need to go try them out, get to a range. If you can't shoot them, at least get your hands on them. See what feels good to you. Understanding that there's this balance between size and shootability. So you always got to hit that. And the other thing is you're probably not going to end up with just one. If you're like us, you know, we, we have this problem. Yes, I am the enabler. I will help you with that problem. If you want to call right now, we'll put you uh, into the after show. 866-TALK-GUN. If you've never been there, <laughs> you're going to like it. We have fun. If you haven't listened to it, check it out. Get your Gun Dealio free for smartphone app for Android or iPhone. It's where you get your deals and you can hear the show. In the meantime, go out and do some shooting. Check your six. Be safe.